God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God wants the best for you in that situation. He can never be limited by our needs. He has more than enough ability and capability to supply your needs. But there's a question that opens the channel for that. James answers it. He says that you have not because you ask not. Many of us have passed this place, but why have we not received answers to what we have asked in prayer? He further says that the reason why you have not received that answered prayer to that big fortune is that many have asked amiss because they want to consume it on their lust. God is more interested in making you than giving you that big fortune. You have to submit your will to God for the channels of your heart to be open for the manifestation. Many have been like merchants and bankers with God. They're trying to transact with God in prayers. God does not want to be transactional. He wants your whole heart sold out to Him. What if God gives you that million-dollar contract? What will you use it for? We see many prodigal sons of God who go about with God's resources and sell out to ungodly practices after that open door. There's this popular saying that not all open doors are from God, because there are open doors that lead them astray. Many have become spiritual adulterers, mingled with the world and its practice. In the name of the open door, they've become enemies of God. Now they are no longer reverencing God in their hearts. Just like during the time of Noah, God says, I've regretted creating man because their thoughts are breeding wickedness. Many are seeking to fulfill their self-desires. Selfish ambition is the very hindrance of unanswered prayers. Our prayers are filled with God, give me and give me, and never concerned about God's need. When our heart is double-minded and unstable, we become like waves, tossed to and fro by the fiery wind. God says to us, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Miracle is not just acts of God. They are acts of God that are given to those who are yielded to God. Is your desire fighting with God's own desire in your life? You're praying for that big mansion because you want to show your neighbors around that you're rich. But God desires that you should be a blessing. You're asking for that huge job opportunity. But God is speaking to you to let go of that bitterness and malice that's been conceived in your heart for many years toward that person. You're asking, God, how does this connect to my miracle? God says, let it go. There was a sick king who sent his servant during the time of the prophet Elijah that his servant should inquire, will he live or die? Elijah stared at him and began crying, and this servant asked him, Man of God, why are you crying? He said, Your king will live, but in reality, he will die and you his servant will be his successor. He said, I see what you will do when you become a king. You will tear pregnant women. This is the result of those who raise to the providence of power without a yielded heart. Talented and able people are not few. There are few yielded persons to God. Those who will fight till they see the will of God on the earth. Why do you want the money? Why do you want a life partner? Why do you want the car and that house? Do you have the need of God in your desires? Submit yourself to God. We have to stop all the pride. We cannot have glorious destiny except you compromise. God wants all of you. He doesn't want anything to take his place in your heart. And he doesn't want any idol nesting in your heart. Our authority over problems and barriers is tied to our submission to God. What does it mean to submit to God? It simply means to humble yourself before God to give your steps to the Almighty to lead you. When God says, go, you go without thinking twice. God is looking for yielded men, men that he can trust, and through them, he can do all he wants to be done. Isaiah 66 verse 2 
For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man I will look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You can be the one that God will find faithful and trustworthy to put the destinies of many in your hand. James 4 verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You need to surrender yourself all to God. You find your true life in losing your life for Jesus' sake. Surrendering to God makes you draw near to God. When you surrender your whole life to God, the weight is no longer on you. It's now on Him. Jesus says to His disciples, Anyone who forsakes father, mother, lands, brothers and sisters for my namesake and the gospel will receive a hundredfold in this life and the life to come. Big things come to those who surrender to God. To surrender to God means to die to self. Those who live for pleasure are dead while living. Life is more than the mundane things you get. You were created to yield to God, to let God take the front seat in your life. Life is like a paradox. We humans do not know what we're chasing. Once there was a stage in our life where we just wanted to get the best results, get admission into high school, and then you were admitted, and then you began to aim for the final year exams and to be the best graduating student. And after that, you began to aim for a lucrative job. Then we get the job, and then we're aiming for the best position to earn more dollars. And then there comes the need for a family, and at the end of it all, it's vanity upon vanity. You keep transacting your peace with earnings. Nothing is worth your peace. Surrender your worries to God. Let God take care of you. It's better than getting the job done. Rest in God. Something big is coming from that rest. God promised his children rest, and all he needed from them was to have the following spirit a spirit that surrenders itself to the will of God. You know in yourself that trusting in yourself has never gotten any farther into greatness. Everyone that has gotten to the place of greatness has to surrender themselves to God, like Abraham. God spoke to him to get out of his father's place in obedience. That is submission. Faith is not just getting all we want. Faith is submission to the will of God. Before you ask for anything, ask God what his place is in it. Let it be for the kingdom. Jesus says to us that if we seek first the kingdom, which means the influence of God through us, God is in the business of saving lives and brings restoration. That is the purpose of your prosperity.